So I'm doing an experiment at the moment which is uh, involving ethanol, water, uh, camphor, potassium nitrate which is one of the ingredients of gunpowder and ammonium chloride which is also a py pyrotechnic compound all in a glass jar being heated right now. So while that's dissolving uh, I'll uh, take a look at another device that um, Michal sent from Poland and that other project. Uh, if everything goes to plan it'll appear as a video uh, at a later date. Uh, you can try and guess what I'm doing from that description though. So this is from a supplier called Leth. I, I'm not even sure I'm pronouncing that correctly because nothing ever sounds the way it looks in, when it's uh, from Poland. So um, this is a colour changing lamp. It's a very typical colour changing style of lamp. And just out of interest, uh, I've dug out every other remote control I could find to see how many of them will be compatible with it. So let's uh, test this out for a start. It's currently in standby mode. This is the original remote. I hope this is the original remote. I might have mixed them up. Uh, turn it on. And the power consumption... Uh, is that got different intensities? Yes, it does have different intensities. So full power, I think that's full power, is about 2.7 watts it's showing in this. Um, the device is rated at 3 watts. That's close enough. Um, it's the usual remote control. It's got the... You can choose the colour and the combination of colours. Of which I have to say, the sort of turquoise colours and the sort of magenta colours are my favourite of those colours. Uh, they're just one of the, a nice combination of colours. Um, the other remote controls, let's try them out. Let's try this little one. Oh, oh, that's put it in a completely different mode. Oh. Oh, right, okay. So once you get down below the red, green, blue, it goes into the sort of... Blimey, they're just all over the place. Okay. Yeah. Okay, what about this one? Nothing in that one. Okay, this one. Yep, some of those are going. A lot of these, as I say, a lot of these remote controls come from the same, uh, well, they use the same chipset. So they have similar functionality, but all the buttons are usually just randomly all over the place. So this one, uh, yeah, a few of these ones are similar, but it appears that this one is fairly unique to, the codes they've got are unique to this light. Okay, let's open this up. So I shall unscrew this. And let's see if the spudger will open it. Uh, I'm going to end up mixing these remote controls up, haven't I? Yes, I am. Oh, well. So let's uh, see if we can spudge this open. Oop, promising. It's making crunching noises. It's glued. Ooh, interesting LED. A fairly decent remote control as well. A classic little 8-pin chip. I bet that's not got a number on it. It never does have a number on it, does it? Nope, no number. It's a generic little microcontroller. We've got which looks like a voltage regulator here. This is probably a standard power supply in the base. I think we should measure the voltage of that. Let's power this up again and poke about in it with a meter. I should mention that you shouldn't really poke about in things like this while they're plugged in, just in case there's no proper separation. Let's uh, turn this off. Let's see, is it this remote control? Yes, it is. So I've got the wires coming up over here, so I'm going to poke a meter on. And we'll see what voltage that is. 20 volt range should be nice. I'm guessing it's going to be 5 volts. Could be wrong. So one connection on there, one on there. I'm completely wrong. 18 volts. Oh, you know what? This is going to be one of these automatic regulating uh, outputs, isn't it? I wonder if they're putting the LEDs in series then. On full weight. Is that going to drop down to a lower voltage? Not really. It's still about 18 volts. Um, right, I wonder what they're, I wonder what's actually 
going on there? So 18 volts there, I'm guessing that is a 5 volt regulator uh, for the chip. 78LO5, it's a low current 5 volt regulator. Uh, I'm guessing also, there's actually quite a lot of resistors in this. I wonder if they're uh, largely connected in parallel. I can see the transistors, the LEDs, 1, 2 and 3. Um, I don't think this regulator would be cutting the voltage down low enough. Unless, I wonder how many chips are in here. I wonder if it's actually switching the sort of higher voltage across that. I didn't actually check. I, I should put my dark glasses on and investigate that. So in this goes again. Is it just going to be a single chip in there? It's very hard to tell because it is uh, so bright. I could dim it down though. Or I could just measure the voltage across it. Oh, you know what? That's new. There's about four chips of each colour in there. That's interesting. Let's uh, prove that. Let's bring the meter back in and put it across the LED. So this is going to be across the green stripe, not sure the polarity. Oh, right, okay. That's that's not what I was expecting. Three volts, unless they're in parallel. 2.9 across that, and what's this across here? Two, three volts. Uh, so that's the red chips in the middle. They, they might be in parallel, but how on earth? Why is it showing 18 volts? That's got me perplexed. I'm going to have to investigate this. I'll be back in a jiffy. But it turns out this is somewhat different to the previous ones, uh, and the first clue to that was the higher voltage and the odd LED in the middle. Uh, we'll start with the power supply card. Initially, when I looked down the end, I saw the little sort of transistor package, and it made me think this was going to use the standard bright power sort of one transistor, well, a chip in a transistor package. But in reality, it uses a BP2519 bright power, seemed to have cornered the market for the uh, power supply chips. So it's a fairly typical arrangement, like uh, a, another previous uh, teardown. It's got one extra feature. Instead of just one capacitor here, it's got two capacitors and a little inductor. Let me show you them in the circuit board. That's the two capacitors here and a little inductor there, and that's just for extra filtering. It also has a few other quirks. It's got a resistor in here, the uh, 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 2K resistor, which is not shown in the, on the sort of typical um, design guide here, the sort of application circuit. But uh, going over the circuitry here, we've got the chip, we've got the MOSFET here, which is an F196, F1N60. But everything else is pretty much as you'd expect. It's got the bootstrap circuit, which uh, when you power it on, it charges this capacitor through this resistor. But in this case, it's two resistors. Uh, 510k adding up to roughly one meg ohm. And as soon as the voltage in this capacitor here is high enough, this circuit kicks into action and it starts driving the inductor here. And one of the results of that is also some current flows along here through this diode and keeps that capacitor charged and that's what powers the chip. There are two feedback resistors, this one and this one, uh, and a current sense resistor 1.8 ohm, which is this one down here. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, the output uh, also goes via, it's got the, um, oh, what do they call that? Is it a freewheeling diode? Uh, this diode here uh, and the capacitors on the other side here. So it's, it's just basically, you know, it's a standard sort of buck regulator. But the really interesting bit of the circuit board is the round circuit board. And it looks really complex at first. It looks like it's got all these resistors and components. In reality, it's not that complex. It's got a chip here, an 8-pin chip that is a generic 8-pin microcontroller. It could well be a PIC12F629. I'm not sure what it is. That certainly the pinout is the same as a PIC12. And it's got this 10K resistor pulling up that pin, which is a... a the reset pin on that particular chip. So you get their 18 volts coming on from that uh, regulated supply. And the reason for the voltage is because the LED here 
uh, instead of having just uh, one of each colour, it's actually got five of the red chips in series here. And then on either side, it's got the a little sort of arch of the LEDs here. And that's the green ones, and then the same at the other side. So in total, it's got 13 chips. Unlucky for some, not unlucky for us, because it's quite a nice arrangement. Uh, so let's see, we've got the power coming in here, and it goes to the voltage regulator 78L05, which is just a low current 5 volt regulator. That uh, regulator has a capacitor between the voltage in and the ground, the zero volts, and the voltage out in the zero volts, and that is then coupled uh, up to, through this link here, to the chip. So this is the positive of the chip. That's the negative of the chip. And there is a sort of negative track coming along here. Lots and lots of links. All these components with an O on them are zero ohm links. And they're, you know, it's the pole board is peppered with them. They're also using a lot of these resistors as links. The chip has its little decoupling capacitor. It's got that pull up resistor. It's the power uh, for the infrared receiver here. And what, it's quite odd. The infrared receiver is mounted through a hole. And this is also two layers of aluminium. It's not just one. Um, they could have done it with one layer, I'm sure. I'm not sure why they used two. Maybe just to spread the dissipation. And I'm guessing this might be a thermally conductive plastic as well. Um, so this gets a uh, supply. It's, the zero volts goes to the middle connection of the infrared receiver uh, and the screen case. The five volts comes along and it goes through a 100 ohm resistor, 101 one zero and one zero, so 100 ohms, and then there's a little decoupling capacitor locally just to provide this sort of basic filtered supply for this uh, component here, the uh, infrared receiver. The output goes through this link, and then there's a pull-up resistor, 10k, one zero and three zeros, 10,000 ohms, and then it goes to the input of the chip. I mean, this chip, it, the pins can probably be assigned as inputs or outputs as required. Uh, the chip then drives the LEDs directly, uh, well not directly, it drives them via these transistors which I'm guessing are small FETs because each one is coupled directly to uh, three of the output pins from the chip. And each one also has a 103, 10 zero and three zeros uh, 10k resistor uh, making sure that the, uh, the input is actually pulled to, let's see, pulled to ground, pulled to the zero volts. The output of each transistor then goes through three resistors, and that's why there's so many components here. So this transistor here is uh, linked up under this link here, going through this uh, 130 ohm resistor, and then the 028. I'm guessing that's a, a code. Uh, so it's going through these two resistors. So it's effectively got three resistors in series, and I'm guessing that's just to spread the power dissipation over a larger area. And likewise, these ones, uh, this transistor down here uh, has a link going, a sort of track going under this uh, resistor and uh, onto this resistor here, which then is in, so you've got one, two, three in series again. And likewise, this, this, and uh, it's this one resistor are all in series. So it's just a, a, a repeat multiple of the circuits. It's very, very simple. Um, and that's fundamentally it. It's got the chip, the voltage regulator, the chip, uh, the infrared receiver, and then three transistors, one for each colour, and then just loads of resistors in, in series just to actually limit the current through them and spread the dissipation a bit. And that's fundamentally it. So it's actually quite a nice design. It's, it's a fairly neat arrangement, particularly. I've never seen them use the multi... LED array like that with a higher voltage, I guess it just makes sense because these transistors don't need to switch so much current, it also spreads the dissipation across the LEDs. So that makes it quite an interesting LED lamp, uh, quite neat indeed. So yes, first I've seen that does it that way, it's quite neat.